Puzzle this out. Basin cleaning. All containers are cleaned the same way. A presentation brought to you by ForYourCNA.com. Today we are focusing on another puzzle piece. Basin cleaning. Basin cleaning is done the same way for all skills, no matter what type of basin you are cleaning. Let's look at each step a little closer. When trying to determine where to dispose of the basin contents, ask yourself where would it normally go? All water and body fluids from bathing and grooming can go in the sink. But anything that normally goes in the toilet will be disposed of in the toilet. Bathing water does not have to be disposed of in the toilet. You bathe in a shower or a bathtub, and you can also clean yourself up in a sink. But you don't ever bathe in a toilet. Bathing water does not have to go in the toilet. If you want to put it there, that's fine, but it doesn't have to go there. Why? Because the water in the basin is not contaminated with body fluids. Let me show you what I mean. If you remember the washing rules, we washed, rinsed, and dried each area. So there are separate washcloths for washing and rinsing. Washing washcloths have soap on them. They can't go back into the basin. So they are always set aside after use. New, clean washcloths are used for rinsing. Rinsing washcloths, because they have not had soap applied, and they have only touched clean skin, can be reused if necessary. But if you are going to be reusing them, make sure you put them back in the basin to stay warm. No one likes a cold, wet washcloth. So, since we never put washcloths back in the basin after applying soap, and the washcloths that have contacted body fluids are always set aside after use, the basin water can be disposed of in the sink, no matter what area was washed. But this is an important principle when learning basin cleaning, too, because for the test, we're not required to disinfect the basins. This is because they know that basins are only used by one patient in a clinical setting. When a patient gets admitted to a clinical setting, they often get an admission kit. This kit has many common items used by patients daily. And these items will only be used by that patient. Think of your sink at home. When you brush your teeth, you probably don't disinfect the sink after every use. You simply rinse it out and clean it once a week. Same with your shower. Most people don't disinfect items they use for bathing and grooming each time they use them. Basin cleaning follows the same process. Personal use items will simply be rinsed, dried, and stored. But if disinfection is required in certain circumstances, this process allows for that step to be easily integrated. Even though disinfection is not required for the test, your workplace may require it. So we'll cover that process here as well. All basins are cleaned the same way. Empty the contents of the basin in the appropriate place, sink, or toilet, and rinse the basin with water from the sink. You can touch the faucet without a barrier during cleaning. Your hands or gloves are dirty, and so is the faucet. After rinsing, dump the rinse water wherever you emptied the basin, and then set the basin down in the sink. If disinfecting the basin, you would spray it now. You cannot touch the basin with soiled gloves or hands while disinfecting. Once the basin has been cleaned, pick it up with a paper towel. Dry the inside with a paper towel and throw it away. Dry the outside with a different paper towel and throw that away. Then get one more paper towel for the supplies and to open the drawer. Pick up the supplies with a paper towel and place them in the basin. And then open the drawer with a paper towel and place the basin and supplies in the drawer Finally, discard the paper towels. Since all basins are cleaned the same way, you only have to learn this once. But practice it well, because you'll be cleaning a lot of basins.